Johnson Watch is back this week to continue our coverage of anything related to men's basketball. Hello, I'm Tegan Lamont. And I'm Dana Pecora. We'll also get to feature baseball and softball in today's segment. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics, Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. The man, the myth, the legend, Dave Roberts will be here to discuss LaSalle baseball with senior outfielder Brian Tago. And later, Jan Lancey will be talking some softball for this week's Explorer Report. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline Top 3. Number 1. The volleyball team has announced Andrew Kroger as new head coach. Kroger has been the LaSalle assistant coach for four seasons before he was named associate head coach under Caitlin Schweighoffer last season. He helped lead the team to the program's first Atlantic 10 playoffs appearance and first winning record in 20 years. Kroger filled in for Schweighoffer for two months in 2017 while she took a step away due to pregnancy. In that span, Kroger won four games in the Atlantic 10, which became a program record at the time. Number two, two explorers nabbed weekly honors for stellar performances this weekend. Junior Anthony Hawthorne had a strong showing in the 800 meter where he finished with a time of 1 minute and 49.4 seconds, which is the top time in the 800 meter so far this season. The finish placed him 17th in a field of 60 of the nation's best. Freshman Chris Lewis earned the award for A-10 Rookie of the Week for the second week, at, uh, the week in a row. Lewis was the first Division I finisher in two events at the Fred Hardy Invitational in Richmond. He ran the 100-meter dash in just under 11 seconds and finished the 200-meter with a time of just under 22 seconds. He is currently ranked third in the conference in both events. Number three, sticking with track, freshman Ibrahim Kadir competed in the IAAF World Cross Country Championships this weekend representing Team Canada. Kadir finished 75th out of 106 as he competed against the top under-20 runners in the world at the AK course in Denmark. He posted a time of 27 minutes and 44 seconds, while Canada altogether placed 12th among 16 countries. So I think the track team has been super impressive. I mean, these, Clearly, young, these yeah. young guys, these freshmen, Kadir and Lewis, have been really, really solid for us. And Hawthorne has also been super impressive and is, uh, at, was at the Florida Relays, which is a tournament that it's a super selective invitational. Mm -hmm. um, as we'll get to later on, only one athlete from LaSalle in both men's and women's got to go. For um, sure. So it's a super exclusive field and it was awesome to see Anthony do pretty well down there. And Absolutely. He was rewarded for it. Yeah, it was definitely pretty cool. And like I said, we always love to see when our athletes get to go and um, represent their country, you know, whether it's us or soccer teams represented Puerto Rico. Like, it's always kind of cool to see that. So we're really proud of them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all for this week's headlines. Let's see how our teams did over the past week. Women's track competed at Richmond's Fred Hardy Invitational, while Grace Mancini made an appearance at the Florida Relays last weekend. In Florida, Mancini placed third in a field of 34 competitors in the 3,000-meter steeplechase. In Richmond, Kalia Miller headlined the event for the women as she broke her own school record in the triple jump, which placed her second, going along with her bronze in the long jump. Ariel Mitchell added a third-place finish in the 100-meter dash, while Liz Mancini grabbed bronze in the 1,500-meter. The Explorers won silver by the four, in the 4x800-meter relay with a team of Alana Paulette, Lexi Sciorettino, Liz Mancini, and Sarah Hanlon. The men also competed in the Richmond Fred Hardy Invitational, while Anthony Hawthorne ran in the Florida Relays, as we said at the top of the show. Hawthorne placed 17th in a field of 60 in the 800 meter. As for the Explorers, they were able to pick up seven wins over the weekend. Chris Lewis won gold in both the 100 and 200 meter dashes. Dennis Manier won the high jump before getting gold in the 4x400 with help from Achi Hall, Kyrie Johnson Waters, and Bryson Peter. Darian Austin won the triple jump, while Nick Smart won the 800 meter dash. Finally, Luke Jackie Zurkowski took first place in the 1500 meter run, while fellow explorer Matthew Bridger snagged second. Baseball let another series slip away and dropped the first two games of a three game set against St. Bonaventure. 
After two tough losses, LaSalle gained back their momentum in Game 3. The game went into extra innings. It was a scoreless 10th, but the Explorers came through in the 11th with five runs. Freshman Ross Mulhall came through big with a, with a double, which allowed Tommy Toll to score the go-ahead run. Freshman Nick DiVietro added an insurance run with his first collegiate home run, which was a grand slam, to give the Explorers a 10-5 lead and a win. The Explorers kept their momentum going against Lehigh. Freshman Tatum Levins headlined the win as he brought the power, belting three home runs to lead LaSalle to a 14-16 win. Dave Roberts sat down with one of the senior leaders on the, on the team, Brian Tago. Take a look. Hi, I'm Dave Roberts here on the sideline with baseball's very own Brian Tago. Brian, you're a senior this year. You, uh, you made it four years. You're a veteran presence on this team. I uh, just want to ask, how does it feel, first and foremost? Yeah, it feels good to be in my fourth year on pace to graduate on time. Um, feels good to have played four years of baseball here at LaSalle. And I mean, like it was, it was a trip with two coaching staffs, having to deal with both coaching staffs. It's not the easiest thing to do, um, but I was able to get through it somehow. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we talk about um, your career. Um, well, let's just like take it back four years. Uh, you're a freshman coming in. Um, you're brand new to like the college system, you know. You had a great high school career and now you're just thrown into a new system. No one knows your name. No one knows who you are. And now you just have to prove yourself. And after a couple of weeks, you know, you got a lot of awards, co-rookie of the week, uh, a lot of like month, player of the month uh, awards. Uh, so how did that feel uh, when you were a freshman? Um, it felt good. I mean, the first few weeks was de were definitely humbling because um, I had struggled, had to figure out how to come out of the struggle. And I was able to do that for a few weeks, got hot, um, luckily got some awards. But I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it without other freshmen playing early because yeah. so like there were other freshmen in my same spot, yeah. which made it kind of easier to transition into college because I wasn't the only one. Making the making the change, so that was that was good for me. Uh, so we so you had a really good freshman year, you know, you know, you transitioned to sophomore year. A lot of people always in any sport they always go sophomore slump. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get out of it, and you know you were very uh, integral part in the, that in that next season, and you were um, uh, you were in the lineup, you know, and then all of a sudden you got struck with injury. So can you talk about you know just sophomore year how that was, which is dealing with injury and, you know, coming back and like, just trying to go out there and play? Yeah, so sophomore year has its growing pains and mine came in like toward the end of the year. Uh, I had a high ankle sprain rounding third base one game and I was out for about 10 games. Uh, missing those games, I mean, I was able to like sit back, watch a few games, like actually see my team play see what it's like from a different point of view. And it kind of made me a better baseball player, like when I came back in the lineup. And um, I mean, yeah, that helped me like finish out the season strong. Um, so, you know, you did talk about how you had to deal with uh, two different coaching staffs. I think that's actually a theme in just the South sports. Like as uh, we've been here, there's been a lot of coaching changes uh, throughout all the sports that have been here. But uh, just uh, talk about with uh, your experience with just like, you know, you come in playing the game with a certain coach that like you came here to play with that coach and all of a sudden they leave and then you have a new coach come in. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because you come in for two years, have um, a coaching staff you're used to, you become basically family with them. And for that all to like change and have a basically, have to basically um, like come go reform into a new family. Yeah. It's, it's hard, but uh, I was able to do it. And I mean, the hardest, the hardest part is kind of like reproving to yourself that you deserve to be on the field. Yeah. But I mean, like I feel we had, we had a lot of talented guys that were able to do that. So, um, I think it was it wasn't too hard of a of an adjustment for a lot of us. Uh, so, like I said, you're a senior this year, veteran presence. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of young guys look up to you. Uh, who are some of the guys you would say that, like, you know, 
that you've bonded with, like not not necessarily just freshmen, but like someone just like teammates that you've made a really strong bond with, and you know you've learned more from them, like more about the game, and just like helping each other out with uh, these last couple wins to uh, this season. Um, well, one person that I've gotten a really strong bond with over the past year or two is Dylan Evans, who's also an outfielder. He's a junior outfielder though. Um, and yeah, I talk to him about the game like almost all the time about defensive routes. Um, certain pitch sequences, I definitely pick his brain a little bit. He picks my brain, like, and we also spend a lot of time off the field too, just making us like just bond a lot more. I mean, he's about to own partner, so <laughs> <laughs> I say the bond's definitely there. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I usually like to uh, just ask, uh, you know. Not, not, because we've already done personal stuff. I just like to ask fun questions. Mm. Uh, who would you say is like the funniest person on the team? Like, you know, those those rain delays where it's you're just you're just sitting there real bored. Like, who would you say like makes you crack up the most when you just like, like when you don't even want to laugh, you just laugh. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> I'd honestly say it's a freshman named Nick DeVitro, because he's like. <laughs> He might be the most quiet kid, yeah. or he might be one of the more quiet kids on the team, and he just says a lot of random things that just like <laughs> <laughs> comes out of nowhere and just makes you laugh. So it's the quiet ones. You have to yeah, watch exactly. Um, I had always to ask this one because you know there's always those guys on the team that like they're just they just they just smell, <laughs> you know they just the smell like they're just they're just stanky, and you're like why are you why are you gross? So who would you say is probably like the smelliest person on the team that you're just like? Dude, like. Dang, you're gonna <laughs> ask me to put my teammates out there like that. <laughs> Always ask the uh, random questions. <laughs> dang. Bubba Weigel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot, but yeah, you <laughs> definitely, definitely like smells a little. <laughs> I mean, every team has it. There's always yeah. that one guy. I know there's one guy, on like, like, you know, everyone has that one guy in high school. Like, you know, he was really lucky, so he just wore, like, a sleeve that he didn't want. Yeah. <laughs> just never washed. So, never know. washed. <laughs> that was every that. day. All right, I'd like to say thank you, Tego, for talking to me, you know. It's been, I mean, I'm glad to have you as a friend for the last four years. I'm glad we could do this. Thank you for wanting It's been a great experience. Appreciate it. Love you. I love you, too. <laughs> and I'm going to take it back to the desk. Thanks, Dave, uh, for that interview with Brian. Um, it was so nice to have a member of the baseball team. I think this was the first time this season. Yep. Brian, actually, so in that little background that we have, Brian's picture was on there, and he signed it for us as a sports line little present to us. So <laughs> thanks, Brian. That was yeah. super nice. Thanks, Brian. All I, right. I mean, it's always cool to have guys like that are staples of that team. Mm -hmm. Brian's been here for four years. As a freshman, he was a starter for the team. Um, he's had some injury issues that have kept him off the field for the yeah. last couple of years, but it's really cool to see guys that are keystones for their teams come and talk to us. And um, Brian's now a leader on the team. He's now a senior. Um, so it's awesome to have those type of guys come in and take their time out of, I mean, obviously Brian's got practice now. He's got classes going on. So yeah. it's awesome for guys like that to take time out and uh, come talk to us. For sure, for sure. Thanks, Brian, and yep. thanks, Dave. Thanks, Brian and Dave. All right. Softball had its second A-10 series this week as it took on St. Bonaventure. The series didn't go well as the Explorers dropped both games of a doubleheader. However, LaSalle bounced back in the third game of the series with a 6-5 win. Sophomore Emily Conway led the way during the series with four runs and six RBIs on 5 of 11 hitting. In their next series, the Blue and Gold had a doubleheader against Lafayette. They dropped the first game 5-1 before coming back and winning the second game 3-2. Sophomore Morgan Orlowski picked up the win with seven strikeouts over seven innings of pitching. Lacrosse was de defeated 12-3 in conference play against Davidson on Friday after letting up nine goals in the first half. LaSalle found the back of the net three times towards the end of the com competition, courtesy of Isabel Caddick, Bridget Rusky, and Allison Hunter. Two days later, the women picked up a win, a 12-6 win against VCU. Hunter opened the scoring for the blue and gold before Maddie Dukowski netted two goals. LaSalle held a 5-3 lead going into the second half. At the 10:53 mark, VCU would find themselves within one, but LaSalle would respond with five unanswered goals to take the win. The men's and women's tennis teams were in action this week where they both went one and one. The women's team defeated Monmouth 6-1 for their first victory of the spring. 
Tiffany Theophil, Ali Snyder, Brittany Poge, Brittany Poge, Jasmine Wally, and Mansi Mohastra all won their singles matches, and the Explorers swept the doubles matches to finish the dominant victory. Later in the week, they would fall to a talented Loyola team, 7-0. On the men's side, the Explorers' singles squad struggled to win anything against Delaware. The only point they would win was due to the doubles team going 2-1 in their matches, thanks to the duo of Francesco Mauri and Nassim Fingiro, and the team of Rogelio Gonzalez and Connor Merrill. In their second match of the week, they would blow out Loyola 6-1 with Mauri, Colin Lucius, and Fangiro all tallying a pair of victories. The women's golf team competed in the Hofstra Quad event. They competed against LIU, Post, Long Island, and Hofstra. The team, uh, the team finished third with a collective score of 373. Junior Marybelle Declan finished tied for third at 12 over par, while classmate Rebecca Smith finished 10th at 15 over par. The rest of the team placed 19th, 20th, and 21st in the field of 22. LaSalle then suffered a crushing defeat as they took on Lehigh in a dual match at home. The Mountain Hawks provided, uh, proved unstoppable as they defeated the Explorers 365 to 311. Junior Marybelle Declan led the Explorers. Her 11 over par finish, finish landed her tied for fifth on the overall leaderboard. Fellow classmate Rebecca Smith followed suit with an eighth place overall finish after carding an 18 over par. Men's and women's rowing returned to the Schuylkill River, hosting Fairfield and Lehigh. Starting with the men's varsity eight, they finished second out of three, clocking in at six minutes and 25 seconds, which was less than a second short of Lehigh. The men's second varsity took first place in their heat with a time of six minutes and 32 seconds. The women did their best keeping the paddles moving. However, the varsity eight came in last place at a time of seven minutes and 39 seconds. Women's second varsity eight did slightly better in their heat as they placed third out of fourth place with a time of eight minutes and 16 seconds. That's all for recaps, but let's check in on some alumni. BJ Johnson is returning to the NBA as he signed with the Sacramento Kings for the rest of the season. The Kings have five games left as they are already eliminated from the playoffs. Johnson played six games for the Atlanta Hawks during his te two 10-day contracts. He averaged 19.5 points per game per, per 40 minutes, shooting 50% from the floor and from behind the arc. After he returned to the G League, he posted 34 points to end the regular season. In two playoff games, BJ averaged 21 points per game, shooting 54.5% and hauled in seven rebounds per game. The Lakeland Magic were eliminated in the conference finals by the Long Island Nets, allowing Johnson to head to Sacramento. It was announced recently that grad student Pookie Powell will represent the A-10 in the Dos Equis 3-on-3 tournament during Final Four weekend. The tournament is made up of senior players who no longer have college eligibility, representing each of the 32 D1 conferences. The teams will compete for a $150,000 prize pool, with champions taking home $100,000. Powell will be joined on the A-10 team by St. Louis guard Tremaine Isabel, Dayton forward Josh Cunningham, and St. Louis guard Javon Bess. This will go nicely with his second team all Big Five placement. All right, so the first thing I would feel like we should talk about real quick is BJ. Sure. Um, he's not going to get a ton of time with Sacramento this year. They've only got five games left. Um, but I think going forward, I, I know they have a team option to pick him up again next year. Mm -hmm. So it would be awesome for him to be a little, to have a role this year and then get picked up for next season and then hopefully be a solid bench player for them moving forward throughout the year next year. This is for sure so exciting. One of the big, biggest things to come out of LaSalle basketball, men's basketball in forever. Yeah. Um, so we're super happy for BJ Johnson. Again, we'll keep you updated yeah. as we know. For Pookie Powell, I think that is a, such a cool honor, such a cool thing. I really didn't even know that was you know something that took place. Yeah. Um, and it's so cool that he was picked out for the A-10. Um, to compete in this three by three tournament, three on three tournament. So yeah, I think it's and really cool. I think it's a it's a really cool event because like most of the bigger conferences, the ACC, the SEC, the all the the Pac-12, those conferences have a lot of guys that are first or second year guys. Then they leave and go to the NBA. Yeah. But this tournament is something that's only for seniors who have taken all of their college eligibility up. So 
the A-10 actually may have a shot at competing against the guys from those bigger conferences. So it's a nice, nice opportunity for Pookie for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. That will definitely be something we'll update you on uh, with yeah. the results of that. Yep. Yep. So that's it for news. But don't move an inch because when we come back, we'll have Sportsline correspondent Gia Lancey joining us on desk to talk softball. See you Learning how to code or make video games and websites. Not only can you post videos online, you can make your own. It's learning about leadership. never stops. I wonder how the basketball team is. You know, there is a show for that called Sports Live. So are you a uh, Carson Wentz or Nick Foles guy? I'm working with Nate Sutcliffe. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder where we can hear about Philly Philly Sports. You know, there is a show for that called Sports Talk Philadelphia. Do you like Family Feud? Uh, yeah. Do you like, uh, do you like all shows like that? Yeah. I wonder if LaSalle has a show like that. That'd be kind of cool. There is a show for that called Q and A. I really wish that we could just like display our talents. Yeah, me too. There is a show for that called Sports by Talent. All this and more on LaSalle TV. Plenty of LaSalle sports action this upcoming week, so let us welcome Gia Lancey for this week's Explorer Report. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. On Saturday, April 6th, our LaSalle softball team will visit the University of Massachusetts at noon to continue Atlantic 10 play with a three-game series. The Explorers will play a doubleheader Saturday, followed by a, sa a Sunday afternoon game. Going into this game, the Explorers have a record of 7-19. and 19. They are coming off a split against Lafayette, where they lost the first game to the Leopards, 5-1, to one, and won the second game 3-2. to two. UMass has a record of 15-14 and 14, and recently came off a win against UConn. Some standout players for the Explorers have been a pair of freshmen, Audrey LaBoulier, who went 2-3 for three and had a double in the first game against Lafayette, and Mackenzie Vogler, who had a home run to center field that gave the Explorers two runs in the win over Lafayette. The most impactful player for UMass is Aaron Stavich, who went 5-6 for six in her last game and had two triples and five RBIs, and three runs scored, along with Jenna Koza, who has been killing opponents with a 482 batting average and 978 slugging percentage. The Minute Women have a strong offense, which is going to be the Explorers' toughest challenge in their matchup. They have an extremely high scoring, they, scoring games with great hitters, and LaSalle must have good pitching and defense to fight for the win. Thank you, Gia. Um, so, like you said there, uh, I think this might be a tough test for the Explorers. Um, UMass is a pretty good team, uh, not quite 500, but or just over 500, um, and we are well under 500, 12 games <laughs> under. Um, so it's going to be a tough battle just in terms of the quality of teams, but when you start looking at the players, um, they've got some girls that can really hit, and I mean, we've got, we've got quite a few girls that can hit too, but we don't exactly go out and shut teams down. Uh, with our pitching, which right. may be an issue for us this week. Right. I mean, that Jenna Goza, Koza girl has 482 batting average. Like, yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, and, and obviously with a 978 slugging percentage, she's, she's got, I think I heard this correctly earlier, she has more extra base hits by herself 
than we have as an entire team. Yeah, that's um, good. That is <laughs> not a way, not, you're going to have to try to limit her, um, but it's kind of like LeBron James in basketball. You're not going to take him away. Uh, he's going to do what he's going to do, but you have to maintain uh, composure and you have to get the rest of the team out. Yeah, and I mean, LaSalle women's team, just they have a lot of talent on offense, but I yeah. mean, their defense and the pitching definitely needs some help. So yeah. that's definitely going to be where the challenge is. Yep. Um, I think for sure when it comes to conference play, though, anything can happen. I think yeah. we've yep. seen this time yeah. and time again. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hopeful, as we'll see when we get to picks. Yeah, I mean, we were, hope we were both hopeful last time we talked about uh, softball going yeah. against St. Bonaventure. And St. Bonaventure came here and took two games from us. So who's to say that that can't happen the other way around? I, right. I said it about baseball. I said it about softball. It's it's Especially game, with baseball and softball. It's a Those game are just that games where, you know. Anything can happen at any given time. I mean. Yeah. One right. up at yeah. bat can change the game. You right. know, anything can really happen. So. Right. Yeah. And that's why I love baseball so much because you can get to a point and then it could just totally turn around. Right. Yeah. And, and softball. Yeah. And the same. Obviously, the sports are super similar in that sense that a momentum shift can happen on any given pitch. I mean, yep. if, uh, what's her name? Jenna Koza. If we get her out the first two times up, maybe they get a little confidence inside of them and. They can carry that to a series win or something like that. But right. uh, as I said before, it's a tough test for the Explorers for sure. Um, well, let's see. We have some picks. We're going to start out with Tegan. Let's see your predictions. Um, yeah, I just talked so much good stuff about the Explorers <laughs> and how they could maybe uh, pull something out of this. But I have UMass sweeping us in a three-game series. Very optimistic, like you just said. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> we both talked about optimism. <laughs> and here we are. Well, I spoke about optimism because I'm at least a little bit more optimistic. Yeah, you not, think they can win one? Not much. <laughs> all right, you were supposed to wait for me. I mean, to all right, go ahead. Come on, finish broken, it off. <laughs> yeah. I have LaSalle, uh, I have UMass taking two games and LaSalle taking one. Yeah. Yes, and I also have UMass taking two to one, so. Yeah, I, I, like Just I said. Just a little optimism. You know, I think maybe one game. We'll see. Yeah. It's there's any any way possible to snag a game. Yeah. Uh, it's a three game series. You're gonna have. I feel like, it's, have, a long I feel like right, it's hard exactly. to win three games. I mean, it, it's hard at, at any level of the sport to take three, three games, games from any so given team. I feel like we have to just be able to pull one out. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they can snag a win. Well, I'll win. <laughs> that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to the, see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com or check out this week's edition of The Collegian. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send us our, your thoughts and suggestions there. <laughs> for Dave, Gia, and our Sportsline team, I'm Tegan Lamont. And I'm Dana Bacora. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you after the game.